And then the strike started. September 1965, after the vote at Guadalupe Church Hall. The next day, we returned to work. At lunch, we made sure that everybody in our crew walked out in a strike. So I was almost 25 years old, but I think I was looking like 18 because I was so skinny. I weighed 110. But I went out talking to everybody. Let's go! We're going to strike! We're going to no huelga! We're going to make more money! And everybody went on strike in our crew. And life became more difficult as the strike war wore on. We were having people against us. They were hitting us, calling us lazy. Go to the welfare. There was one time we were driving a scout car. It was hard to call the workers out of the field to strike. Yes, we would get out well before sunup and start searching for the workers. The one time it was myself, my sister Maria. Me. And the, the driver was... Mike Vasquez. Yup, Mike, Va Mike Vasquez. We were coming to an intersection right there at the county line. Mm -hmm. And so what they did, one car hit us in the middle of the station wagon. They had worked the whole thing out. And then another car hit us from the other side. And we weren't able to get out. But we had a CB radio and we were able to call union headquarters to come get us. But I think we were doing good, talking to the people. Come on, come on! Join the strike in Huelga! We're going to win this strike! More money! <laughs> I think we became good organizers. Yeah, we were good organizers. <laughs> they gave me a job, organizing the people in my crew. I was a crew foreman. And it was kind of funny because as I was beginning to talk to a new worker, I would size them up and try to figure them out, you know? Because there were workers who would turn you in to the company, you know, and get you fired. I didn't want to get fired. So I would ease into the conversation, you know? And many times I found out that that worker was already with the union, or maybe wasn't with the union yet, but he wanted to be with the union. So I would give them a card, had membership cards, and we would fill them out. So before too long, all the workers I had were members. And the union wanted me to give them information as to everything that was happening inside. Because this was a huge corporation, you know? And one of those things was that we should Organize the workers to take out the garbage. Organize them to take whatever they got over to the union office and to take that corporation's trash and put it inside of a bag and hide it inside of another trash bag. And we will take it to the union office. And we found that the company personnel, you know, from the, from the corporation, they will tear up their memos. And we will have to put it together piece by piece, you know, like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. But you'd be surprised the amount of information we got, like, like when the next shipment of grapes was going to go out because we were boycotting grapes. Who's gonna buy them? What city? What strategy the company will use to fight the union? We found out all those things and we knew just what the company was going to do. That was one assignment. Everybody started getting stronger and stronger. But then they started to bring in all those people to break the strike. Undocumented workers from different areas of Mexico. Uh, Tijuana, Juarez, Mexicali. In buses. Where Helen Chavez was working, in Sierra Vista Ranch, that was De Giorgio Corporation. It was like 27 buses. 1,500 people a day, replacing the workers. But the picket lines were working, and we'd say, we're on strike. You're not supposed to cross our picket. We're brothers and sisters. Come on. And we pulled so many people out. And then they'd bring some more people. It was crazy. Uh, the growers started feeling we were really very strong, and then they started to fight us with the police. We started getting so into, into this movement. There was something for us. Something. This is mine. I want to fight for my job. But don't respond to anger. Yes, don't feel angry. <laughs> And Caesar was so involved in the nonviolence. Like, my dad always told us not to respond to bad people, and I think it was easier for us to accept when Caesar started to tell us, don't be angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> I remember my mom coming home and saying something about there was a shooting out on the picket line. 
and somebody had gotten hurt or that sometimes people would pass by and just shoot at them and it would scare me a lot of the time. I remember the Friday night meetings that we had. Everybody lived on $5 a week. If you went out on the picket line every day at the meetings on Friday, you would get $5 and that was for you to splurge. Do whatever you want. That was a lot of money when you didn't have money in your pocket. If you went out to the picket lines, you got $5 and that's what the union went on. That $5 a week. I remember when the strike first started. There wasn't any way to pay bills, any way to get food. I remember my dad saying something that once the contributions started coming in, Caesar had everybody bring their bills and stuff that they owed into the union. Little by little, the union was helping everybody pay off the bills. The union didn't want anybody to lose their house or anything because of the strike. Then we went into the 300 mile march from Delano to Sacramento in March 1966. We saw so many things that we never seen before. So many farm workers, so many supporters. And then we got Shenley. Shenley Corporation, one of the largest grape growers in California, signed a contract with the union. Some of the people that had a lot of family, they went back to work for Shenley. Our father was one. He started making money so he could support us. We stayed out of the fields, me and my sister. We were going to get to Giorgio Corporation. Yep, we started doing boycotts in LA, San Francisco, everywhere. And we got lots of support for La Causa. And a lot of attacks and harassment and violence. They used to come and throw things at us. Water. Spit on us. Try to run us over. All kinds of things. They would try to make us angry. But Caesar told us it was a non-violence. He was the one that teaches us how to do that. If you ever feel angry, don't think about it. Ignore that. Don't listen to it. And that is the way we did it. Some days we were so angry, so mad that we were ready to go and fight. You know what? We've been all these years working on La Causa to lose it in five minutes. Is it worth it? Just think about that. Let's just go like Gandhi. Caesar had a lot of ideas from Gandhi. The other one was a very strange assignment. I was told to keep the workers working. You know, try not to get nobody fired. And to stay on the job, you know? Stay on the job and take a lot of bull from the company. Do whatever we have to do, but stay on the job. And in the meantime, keep organizing more and more and more because People kept coming in. We were organizing workers with this beautiful plan. And while all this is going on, Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta are talking to somebody. I don't know where in, in New York or Washington. And before too long, a crew of politicians came down into Delano and the union got us together and they interviewed us. You see, the company had called elections and those politicians found out that the elections were rigged, you know? And one of the things that happened was that the Teamsters Union was coming in and sending organizers to the fields to work with the crews and sign them up for the Teamsters. And the company called for elections and they turned out to be crooked elections. All the people in charge of the elections were company people. So when the union found that out, they told all of us not to vote. Don't have anything to do with their elections. And we're talking about possibly around 1,500 workers. They didn't end up working too well for the Teamsters. <laughs> I mean, I would follow their organizer around as he was going from row to row, you know? And I would just go like, you know, make a sign. And the worker wouldn't sign the card, you know? One time a Teamster organizer saw me giving the farm worker the signal not to sign, and he turned around. He suspected something was kind of strange, and he turned around and suddenly he says, hey, why do you tell him not to sign? I said, okay. The agreement is that you guys can come in only at night and at the labor camps, and you're violating that agreement? The United Farm Workers are not allowed to come in here and do what you're doing. And I realized, ah, I just walked myself into a little corner. I'm gonna get fired. But you know what? 
I never heard anything from the Teamsters or the company. And then there was this other time that the company got us all together in front of the packing shed. All of us, you know, about 1,500 people, most of them Chicanos, you know, and they were mostly women. Dick Myers went to the microphone and he was going to give us a pep talk. And he made the mistake of his life. He said the Georgia was here long before the union, long before Cesar Chavez, and the Georgia was not going to sign a union contract, not one headed by a Mexican Cesar Chavez. And immediately you could hear a hum going through the whole crowd. 1,500 people. I said to myself, thank you, Dick Myers. You've helped us with about 1,000 hours worth of work. And from that day on, I noticed that all those people that were there were easier to talk to, you know? Yeah, Dick Myers, maybe he didn't know, but he offended everybody, all of us. He went on to say, we're going to be here long before, long after Cesar Chavez is gone. Well, that day helped us a lot. Thank you.